This is the new Q8. The culture is changing. The financial center is not just buildings, it's the mindset. We are well prepared to create the best business environment for international companies and the opportunities are huge. It's an exciting place to work and a vibrant place to live. The freedom of speech and press in Kuwait, one of the highest in the region, a very dynamic society, open to different cultures. It's the culture of trading, the culture of openness, the culture of global mentality that develops this level of tolerance. I think the key ingredients are in place to enable a significant growth in investment here in Kuwait. The potential is enormous. People see Kuwait as like a desert, but um, we have like the best beaches, the best food, restaurants, cafes, extreme sport. We have really great new generation. Well educated, they have the passion. You have young people who no longer think in brick and mortar. They're starting to think, well, what if I can be the next Facebook? What if I can be the next Instagram? Mega projects that are now taking place at a pace that has never before been seen. We know full well that we cannot get to where we want to be without investment and the help of all our friends and partners. And this is an open invitation. Come to Kuwait. A strategic location, a stable government, and an open market economy are just a few examples of what Kuwait can offer. In the past few years, the uh, government and parliament have been introducing a very favorable and positive measures in order to uh, enhance the business environment in Kuwait to reach the optimal goal by reducing dependence on oil and creating other forms of income. Kuwait constitution is the oldest working uh, constitution in the region. We have real democracy, and in order to develop any country, you need political stability. Quite a number of very important laws have been approved by the government, which allowed now to any foreign company to invest in Kuwait on their own without having any Kuwaiti partner with them. The CMA law is changing, the commercial law is changing, banks are ready, institutions are ready, and you can feel that everybody is, is in line. I mean, there is kind of, of alignment between the private sector and the public sector. A law allowing 100% foreign ownership is in effect for sole person companies, limited liability firms, and shareholding entities. This gives Q8 a leading edge in the GCC. I see a lot of changes in the legislation for the benefit of the economy. This will give a push for the Kuwaiti companies and for the foreign companies to come and invest and put their money because if they find the right economic environment, the right opportunities, it will be very attractive for any investor, whether local or foreigner. A lot of our development projects are done in partnership with foreign firms. Foreign companies must understand what are the needs for Kuwaiti projects. Several local entities have been created in order to provide the right support for this brand new investment climate. The Kuwait Direct Investment Promotion Authority is a one-stop shop for foreign business licenses and a source of reliable guidance for foreign investors. Kadipa can help investors get started in 30 days or less. Multinational companies operating in Kuwait have access through Kadipa to available incentives 
exemptions and guarantees. What we are looking for is to attract innovation, technologies, help us and create job opportunities for the Kuwaitis and bring an added value investment to the Kuwait economy. Kadiba can provide them with all the facilities and all the information they need about the new projects that's available. As part of Kadiba's network, the Kuwait Authority for Partnership Projects is also here to help. It ensures that the new law strengthens and enables PPPs while broadening the benefits they bring to both public and private entities. All of the projects we are offering is a very large scale that need very specialized know-how and that can only be done by large international investors. The government and the private sector are reacting in a positive way to do these improvements. The Shamal al-Zur power station is an example of a project that could not have happened without international investors. Investment worth $1.8 billion has been spent on the first phase. So when fully operational, the project will produce about 1,500 megawatts of electricity and 107 million imperial gallons of water per day. That's about 10% of Kuwait's electricity demand and 20% of Kuwait's water demand. So phase one was run under a competitive tender process. Phases two, three, four and five will follow a similar process and we expect to see other international investors and lenders be attracted to Kuwait. Perhaps the most high profile is the Sheikh Jabir Al Ahmad Causeway project, on track for completion in 2018. Jamal Abdul Nasser Street is undergoing major improvements worth $800 million. The $7 billion metro system planned for Kuwait is also back on track. Construction on the new terminal at Kuwait International Airport is set to increase passenger capacity from 5 to 10 million passengers a year. The Civil Aviation Master Plan includes major projects which will expand and develop Kuwait International Airport's infrastructure and facilities. The $16 billion Mubarak al-Kabir port will handle over 3.6 million TEUs per year, becoming a multimodal transshipment link to the GCC railway. The Sheikh Jabir al-Ahmed Culture Center is the flagship project for a new cultural district. It includes state-of-the-art theaters, concert halls, and exhibition space. These are just a few of the 30 projects planned in nine strategic sectors. We've realized the more exposure Kuwaitis get, the hungrier they become. And this is why there's a lot of investment in healthcare, in infrastructure, in education. The government recently announced the latest phase of the Kuwait Development Plan, an ambitious long-term strategic vision, including a $116 billion investment package. Especially right now, the opportunities are a lot. We see that the next few years we would like to invest in Kuwait. I mean, why do we go out of Kuwait if we see the investments are and the opportunities are available? Multinational companies are already accepting the invitation. The first company to set up 100% foreign-owned operations in Kuwait, IBM. Its central office serves as a customer service hub, emphasizing research, systems integration, and facilities management. Kuwait is very advanced when it comes to the information technology. We believe on Kuwait and we believe on the market. There is a big potential and that's why we decided to pursue the relationship with Kadiba and start having our own license based on the 100%. We are not here just for a year or two. We are here to stay. Kuwait's massive development plans welcome ICT companies to diversify the economic landscape. Huawei is already committed to the non-oil sector, now that it's easier than ever to get started. Kuwait is probably the highest mobile penetration in all the GCC countries. It's already more than 200% in terms of mobile subscribers. In the past 80 years, it has been growing so fast. One of the key initiatives, we're trying to set up a local training center and we target every year to train at least 300 engineers or customers. We'd like to keep doing so. 
not only for one year or two years, but keep it as a long-term program. Local operators stand to benefit from Huawei's projects. Many have entered strategic agreements for equipment and services in coming years, including 4.5G technology. We would like to be one of the key examples, a successful story for a foreign company, but also a local company in Kuwait. We'd like to encourage all the other companies to do so. Kuwaiti partners are welcome to cooperate as infrastructure development speeds up. Huawei intends to benefit local development by adding technology, creativity and innovation. If we get companies like GE or IBM or any other tech giant that comes into Kuwait to actually mix into the Kuwaiti community, that would be the biggest benefit we can have for the economy here. We are open to receive a new idea, a new thinking, or a new hub that has a value added to the Kuwait economy. The projects are already there and development plan has been set, so it's a matter of execution. The Kuwaitis have the passion, they have the creativity. So if we can supply the know-how and if we can supply the education, there is no reason whatsoever that Kuwait can grow to become a global tech scene and a global entrepreneurship scene. We're all in one boat and we have uh, one goal, which is developing the country.